Welcome back to Physics Junction. In today's video, let me talk about a nano catalyst. Let's start with a brief introduction to a catalyst. The catalytic process is one of the fundamental pillars in green chemistry. It's a simple, safe and sustainable process. Therefore, structuring and creating perfect catalysts is one of the significant ideas of green science. The catalytic process enables economical formation of pure materials. So the catalytic technologies are critical in present and future energy, chemical process and in environmental industries. The various technologies rely on catalytic process are conversion of crude oil, coal and natural gas to fuels, chemical feedstock, production of a variety of petrochemical and chemical products, emission control of carbon monoxide and hydrocarbons, and the fabrication of electrode material for fuel cells. Next, what's the need for development of advanced catalysts? To produce high value products with inexpensive raw materials, to perform energy efficient chemical conversion process, to impose stringent environmental regulations, and to fabricate low cost catalysts such as with reduction or replacement of precious metals. Next, let's move on to the definition of catalyst. Catalyst is a substance, but it is neither a reactant nor a product in the reaction process, but it changes the rate of the reactions. In general, it is used to speed up the reaction and it lowers the activation energy. Activation energy is nothing but the minimum energy required at which the atoms or molecules undergo a chemical transformation. So without the catalyst, the activation energy is very high. When the catalysts are used, the activation energy is reduced considerably. In addition, after the reactions, the catalyst can be recovered unchanged. That is without any physical transformation on the catalyst. The catalyst materials can be categorized into two types. One is the homogeneous catalyst, another one is the heterogeneous catalyst. The first one is the homogeneous catalyst. In this process, both the reactants and the catalyst are in the same phase. So they are single phase materials. Usually it is a liquid phase, a solution or a suspension of solute particles in a solvent. And here the process is taken place at low temperature. However, the separation of catalyst is very tricky. That is recovery of catalyst is uh, very difficult. The example is organometallic complexes. The second process is heterogeneous catalysis. Here the reactants and the catalysts are in different phase. Reactants are in liquid or gas phase and the catalysts are in solid phase. So they are multi-phase materials. The heterogeneous catalyst process is an environmentally friendly process. Here the reaction is taken place at a higher temperature. However, the design and optimization is here very tricky. But here the recovery is very simple. Since the catalyst is in solid form, it can be easily filtered out. It allows a degree of control over reactant flow on the catalyst surface. Example, palladium, iron, gold, nickel and metal oxides and metal sulfides. Next, let's move on to nano catalyst that is nano structured material as catalyst. Nano catalyst is a material with the catalytic properties which functions at atomic scale. A nano catalyst is composed of nanoparticles smaller than 100 nanometer at least in one dimension either externally or in terms of internal structures. A nano catalyst aims in controlling chemical reactions by changing the kinetics using nano patterning of the reaction centers. A nanoparticle catalyst have a very large surface area which has a straightforward positive effect on the reaction rate. Therefore, more surface is available to the reactants that means a higher percentage of atoms on the surface. Thus, the higher activity and better selectivity of nano catalysts over the traditional catalysts are attributed to their larger surface area. So, example for nano catalysts are aluminium, ferrous, Ag, silver nanoparticles, then titanium dioxide, cerium dioxide, Fe2O3, ZNO, and silica. So, then types and characteristics of nano catalysts. There are different types of nano catalysts, carbon nanotubes, monometallic nanoparticles, bimetallic nanoparticles and clusters, metal oxide and metal sulfide nanoparticles, nanowires, nanocomposites and nanoporous materials. Then characteristics of nano catalysts, larger surface area, high catalytic activity, they are prone to agglomeration broad range of applications and they are a good adsorbent. The change of adsorbent strength or the oxidation state are revealed by changes in their electronic structures. The next one is the nano catalyst properties. The nano catalyst have the combined advantages of both the homogeneous and heterogeneous catalyst system. 
Nanopetrol system allows the rapid selective chemical transformations with excellent product yield coupled with the ease of catalyst separation and recovery. The nanocatalysts are more active, more stable, more selective, easily recoverable, efficient, cost effective and eco-friendly. The different catalytic properties are depends on surface structure, composition of nanoparticles, reaction intermediates, adsorbates and oxidation states. So far we learned what are the different characteristics of nanocatalysts and we know based on the nano material used for a catalytic process what are the different types of nanocatalysts such as carbon nanotube catalyst, metallic nanoparticle catalysts, then semiconductor catalysts and nanocomposite catalysts. Here I am going to explain briefly metal nanoparticles catalyst, semiconductor catalyst and nanocomposite catalyst materials. The first one is the metallic nanoparticle catalyst that is the plasmonic catalyst metal colloids are very efficient catalyst example gold silver copper ferrous platinum and so on the metal nanoparticles possess good adsorption properties generally the metal nanoparticles are prepared by reduction method the reduction method is employed to control the size and shape of the metal nanoparticles the noble metal nanoparticles like gold silver and copper demonstrate plasmonic resonance effect that is collective electron oscillations which resonates at the frequency of incident light. So this is incident light. The electron cloud of the metal nanoparticles oscillate at the frequency of the incident light. This is called surface plasmon resonance. Due to the well-defined and controlled physical and chemical features, the monometallic plasmonic catalysts exhibit enhanced plasmon mediated chemical transformations. Here the localized surface plasmon resonance excitation in plasmonic nanoparticles supports the acceleration and control of molecular transformations. Next let's move on to plasmon mediated photocatalytic reactions in silver nanoparticles that is silver nanoparticle plasmonic catalyst. In photocatalytic process it utilizes sunlight as a driving force in clean energy conversion which can produce fuels and chemicals by converting abandoned natural resources and greenhouse gases. Here in this case the plasmonic energy transfer taken place through the following effects that is strong light absorption, intensive far field light scattering, near field electromagnetic field strengthening, abandoned hot carrier generation, plasmonic heating effects. So here we have the silver nanoparticle plasmonic catalyst under the radiation of light the hot electrons are produced and these hot electrons involve in oxidation and reduction reactions and reacts with the dye molecules which converts the dye molecules into non-toxic constituents. The catalytic activity of the silver nanoparticles are easily tuned by the particle size, shape and temperature and these nanoparticles are active under mild condition even at a ambient temperature because of their low cost and a relatively low toxicity the silver nanoparticles are preferred in most of the photocatalytic reactions. So the next one is semiconductor nanophotocatalyst. The semiconductor nanophotocatalysts are potential candidates as catalyst materials due to their wider band gap in the visible region. The catalytic efficiency of semiconductor photocatalyst is determined by the various structural parameters such as size, shape, crystallinity and porosity contact surface and spatial distribution. The optimization conditions to improve the photocatalytic performance of a semiconductor is to expand the light response region and to enhance the formation rate of electron hole pairs. This is a TiO2 photocatalyst. The band gap energy of the TiO2 is 3.2 electron volt. So it requires a high energy that is ultraviolet radiations to produce the electron hole pairs. However, the band gap of the TiO2 material can be modified or reduced by doping with metal ions. Another method is preparation of nanocomposite photocatalyst. Since the semiconductor nanophotocatalysts have the uh, drawback of rapid recombination of photo generated electron hole pairs, by the preparation of nanocomposite photocatalyst, the recombination of electron hole pairs can be delayed. So, next let's move on to nanocomposite photocatalyst. So, here we have the metal semiconductor nanocomposite. The metal semiconductor nanocomposites are prepared by coupling semiconductor nanostructures with metal nanoparticles. Preparation of nanocomposite is one of the most effective methods to achieve the high performance photocatalyst because of the plasmon induced resonance energy transfer. Here the origination of photocatalytic aspects are 
by the improved charge separation at the metal semiconductor interface then increased absorption of visible light due to the surface plasma and resonance of metals. Therefore, decorating the semiconductors with metal nanoparticles reduces the band gap and makes the possibility of visible light irradiation for the generation of electron hole pairs. So this is the last one, applications of a nano catalyst. In nano catalyst, because of nano size, the contact between the reactants and the catalyst increases dramatically. Also, the larger surface to volume ratio, small size, varied shapes of nanomaterials are highly beneficial to catalytic reactions. So here the application of nanocatalyst enable better yield of a product by using the less energy, minimizes the waste production and protects the environment from various harmful aspects. So here we have the different applications. The first one is water purification. So in water purification, it degrades the contaminants and the irradiation of light. Example, silver nanoparticles and TiO2 nanoparticles. Then fuel cell. So in fuel cell, to improve the performance of the fuel cells, the catalysts used are carbon nanotubes and platinum catalysts. Then in energy storage, to release the oxygen gas, which is critical process in energy storage. The next one is composite solid rocket propellants. Here it enhances the propellant burning rate. The catalyst used is nano aluminium. The next one is biodiesel production. So in biodiesel production, the catalyst used is metal oxide. It increases the transesterification efficiency. The last one is the drug delivery. So in drug delivery, it creates gels for drug delivery. These are the various applications of nano catalyst. Here I have given the list of references. If you have any questions, please let me know. I hope this video is uh, more helpful to you all. Thanks for watching.